Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. Then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for church, you're never alone. How oh, thank the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times, he's still God in the bad times. The God of the day, he's still God in the night. We can talk of faith when we're upon the mountain. But that talk comes so easy when life's sad its best. But I found him in that valley of trials and temptation. Oh, that's when true faith is really put to the test. I'm a witness today that the God on the mountain, he's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, call on him, he'll make them right. Oh, the God. God of the day is still God in the night. If you got a testimony that sing it with me. The God on the mountain, he's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. The God The God of the day is still God in the night. I'm a testimony to tell you. The God of the good times, he's still God in the bad times. Woo! <laughs> the God of the day is still God in the night. Hell didn't like that. I think I'll tell him again. The God of the good times. He's still God in all the bad times. The God of the day. He's still God in the night. Well, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, state trooper seen Mama McCamey walking out the other day. She's retired. Seen her walking out, and they told the story. He pulled up beside her and said, I just got one question to ask you. Is he still God? Said Mama McCamey started shouting right there on the street corner and said, I want to tell you, he's still God. Oh, my, I want to tell you, he's still God. He's still high and lifted up. He hasn't got nervous. He hasn't had to check his books. He hasn't had to look anybody up on file. Hallelujah. He knows my down sittings and my uprisings. He knows my thoughts are far off. He even knows every hair of my head. And I can tell you he has to keep track a lot lately. Oh, my, because I'm telling you, I'm wondering. 
It's all going to come out lately, but I want to tell you something. Every time I'm reminded, I'm combing my hair or brushing my hair. I have to take out that out of my brush and throw it in the garbage. I think there's a God that cares enough to keep record. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, there ain't nothing discarded in your life that God don't know right where you are. Sometimes you have to do like the Word of God says. You have to be at the place where you have to strengthen those things that remain. But I want to tell you, whatever you got left, God can make something out of it. I thank Him for that today. It is good to be here. Good to be with First Lady and uh, the pastor uh, not feeling good. But I know you'll probably uh, watch it live stream. But I just wanted to tell you it's an honor to be able to be here. It was a little bit better. Wouldn't it? y'all could stand me a little bit better since I had some music, right? I tell you, I told my folks, I said, them folks love me. I said, I was just a, I was a hollering with no music. And I said, my voice crackling up. I said, they was just a clapping like they liked it. I said, they love me. That's all there is to it. I love y'all too. I, I'm telling you, some of the finest folks. And I, and I mean that. I don't just tell you in front of your face. I tell you, I tell it behind your back. Grace Street is just that. It's grace. I thank God for every one of you. I thank you for the grace that you're showing your pastor. Now, it's going to be hard to tell you that without tears. Because it's easy when it's going one way to a lot of people. But when the time comes that that grace has to go back, there's a few people that will take it back. I appreciate you today doing that with the bottom of my heart, First Lady. I'm telling you, she's a powerhouse. And I love her. From the bottom of my heart, I, 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 she's got endurance like no other. And I love her, and I know she loves you. And I, I just, that beautiful little uh, miracle she's holding, teasing me like she did, smiled at me. Then when I got her, she started squalling. But I tell you, I love to look at things that looked impossible. The tears that were shed and, and the places where I went and prayed would... Uh, beautiful uh, Miranda over there. And the night I remember, she may not remember it because I'm sure there's a lot of others people prayed. But I told her, I said, God said, he'll make, come on. I, I feel that with all my heart. We need to look at those things. When hell is trying his best to tell you this mountain can't be moved, you tell him he came too late. <laughs> all those mountains behind me, devil, Oh, I tell him sometimes, you should have got me back there. Because now I know that he is sufficient. And I know he's so real. I don't have a whole lot today. I know them groceries are calling you. And I didn't come to just keep you a long time. This is about your pastor today. It's all about your pastor. But uh, I, I just prayed and felt this on my heart. Didn't just put down a few notes. Go with me if you have your Bible. The Second Corinthians. Very familiar scripture. We preached it all different kind of ways. But today, just going to take one verse out of it. And I felt like the Lord would have me to bring this word to you today. And for your pastor and, and this congregation on this day. And I, I, I want you to know that you are also not fighting this alone. Our church is praying with you. We were, uh, we've had some folks that are fasting and praying with you too. And uh, like I said, he don't always do it when I think he's going to do it. But I want to tell you, he ain't never failed to not do it. And I love him for that. And I'm a testimony of that. Second Corinthians 12th chapter. We know the uh, story, most of us, if we've been in church any amount of time. We know the struggle that Paul was in. He asked the question to God, can you not remove this thorn, this messenger of Satan that is buffeting me? He is in agony praying like some of us have prayed. God, would you move it? I need you to move it today. He said, this thing I besought the Lord thrice, but the Lord had me to go to this verse today to talk to you just a moment on the ninth verse. That's the one that's written in red. That ninth verse said, and he said unto me, Paul said, he said unto me, Oh, I like it when God talks, don't you? He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect 
in weakness. I just want to bring a reminder to you today. When it's not about me, it's about him. Let's ask the Lord to touch us today. Father, I thank you so much for what you've already done in this house. I thank you that you're reminding us that the God of the mountain is that God in the valley. I'm asking you today, God, to undergird First Lady Pastor in this precious church. God, some way or another, get Wendy out of the way. Would you let the Holy Ghost breathe in this house? Would you let him undergird them and strengthen them? God, would you send a word to them, Lord? This ain't about me, God. It's about you. I'm asking you, God, to give them a word in season. Breathe on them today and give them what they need. Bless this pastor and his wife, and I'm believing you with everything that's within me, that a miracle is going to take place, that those who have prayed are going to shout. I'm believing that, God. I stand on your word. I look to your word and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Paul was talking to us here. He said, unless I be exalted above measure, he said, there was appointed unto me a thorn in the flesh. We all know we've heard these uh, verses so many times, preached so many ways. But today, I just want to preach to you about that word grace. That word grace in there when he told him, my grace is sufficient. You know, we say grace is unmerited favor. And that is the dictionary it is. That's what it says, unmerited favor. It is favor that I did not deserve. See, mercy was what I didn't get what I, I did not get what I did deserve. That's mercy. I deserved hell and God gave me mercy. But grace is when he gives me what I do not deserve and and we talk about grace so easily oh thank God for the amazing grace we we love to sing about amazing grace and it never gets easy to sing it never gets old excuse me to sing about that amazing grace but can I tell you that grace is more than just that one little dictionary uh, uh, meaning there grace comes in all manner of ways you see sometimes grace comes on day that I don't have any strength and grace becomes my strength come on grace sometimes comes on days when I don't feel no love and I, I feel like I'm about to smother and go under grace comes in love of a father that knows right where I'm at it may come in a song or, or a word but grace has a lot more meaning than those two little words called unmerited favor I come to tell somebody today that Paul was at a place that your pastor and I'm sure first lady have been lately. He wrestled with one thing. I, I, it will, you, as a pastor, I can tell you that when your health, begin, when you begin to battle your health, you automatically go towards your church and your thoughts and you thank God. How am I going to be able to battle this and to battle for my church? I can tell you Paul was in that same battle. How do you know, Sister Wendy? If you read and go on a little ways, Paul began to talk about that I become, if I become a burdensome to you. He's talking about that dread. That somehow or another, if that thorn makes me to a place, that I become a burden to the very ones that I wanted to lift up. I've been there, folks. When I thought to myself, I need to go ahead and resign. Because I don't want to become a burden to the very ones that I wanted to lift up. I remember standing in front of my church and I remember it very clearly. Standing there and tell them, you deserve better. I, I, I'm fighting in my health and you deserve better. And if, you could, if I could find you a younger person that would take this, I would do it in a heartbeat. But I come to tell somebody... God said, Wendy, I'm not going to do it your way, but hold on. I'm going to show you what grace is all about. I'm going to show you what the grace of God means when it says grace means it's his strength made perfect in my weakness. Oh, I come to tell somebody, I looked up strength this morning. And it's amazing to me how I've not even noticed that if you look strength up in a dictionary... It means the capacity of my resistance. 
He said, my strength, God said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And strength is brought out in, in when I studied this morning, the capacity of resistance. In other words, when I used to go to the gym as a young woman, I would get on there with my legs, those machines, and push. And the more weight that I pushed, the stronger my legs become. The more weight that I pushed, the stronger my muscles become. Can I tell you that God has got his church now in a resistance? We are no longer in Andy Griffin time. Come on. We are Mayberry is gone. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. We are now in a warfare like no other. Hell has raised the bar. And hell has come against the church like no other. But what hell for God is the more pressure he pushes the resistance of the church begins to grow and when we resist something begins to happen in our spirit and the word says that when you begin to resist that enemy something begins to happen in you that brings a strength that you know not of we're human and there's a part of us, your pastor has already said it, there's a part of us that puts our worth in what we do. I did that for years, very independent. I put my worth in what I could accomplish. But the day come when I had to sit down and pray that I could get back up. That time was a time that, like no other, because not only was I under the pressure to give up, but I was under the pressure in my body to just quit fighting. I can tell you there are several times, and I wish I could tell you today, if you got any confidence in me, hold on. I pray this don't move you. But I wish I could tell you that I always had faith, that I always knew God was going to do it like he done it. That I always knew God was going to come the way he come. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that in the resistance, there were days I didn't have much push. But what push I had, the Holy Ghost pushed with me. Woo! I said the days when I didn't have much push left, the Holy Ghost would begin to push with me. And I come to tell somebody, there is times that you feel like lately, that resistance is more than you can take. But God reminded Paul so he could remind his church, your strength is going to be perfect in the weakness you're fighting. What do you mean, Sister Wendy? Something came to my mind. The greatest act of a mother is to be needed, to be loved. Same way with a father. Greatest act of a uh, feeling of a father is for his son or daughter to need him. My daddy must have felt mighty good because I always needed him. He is always my hero. Anybody that asked me on the road, I'd be headed home, they'd say something wrong with your vehicle. I said, I'll get my daddy to check on him. Daddy wasn't a mechanic. But in my eyes, daddy could do anything. They said, I hear a knock in your car. I said, that's all right. I get it home. Daddy will take care of it. Why? Because to me, daddy could take care of it. I want to tell somebody that did my daddy good. He never had no education. He never was able uh, uh, to work a job that was anything that most people would call slave labor. But there was something in my daddy that when his children needed him, three o'clock on an interstate, one of the coldest days of the year in Florida, I'm headed back from a revival, 3 a.m. We, I, I guess, you know, the, the, the vehicles uh, where it tells you the uh, gas had messed up. So here we are with no places to get gas. We run out of gas coming from South Florida to get home. 
3 a.m., me and my uh, friend was on the way home, and I told her, I said, get down. I don't want anybody to see you. Lock the door. I said, if anybody comes or stops, you turn the rescue thing on, the emergency, so that somebody will see. I said, I've got to get somewhere. This is when we didn't have cell phones. You know, I tell people all the time, I act like a nervous wreck when I ain't got my cell phone, and I travel the world with that one. We just do it. It's part of us. I think, oh, no, I can't do without my cell phone. And then God says, well, who kept you for a a whole world you traveled in? But I got out that night, 3 a.m., walked down the grassy part of that interstate, got to the place I literally jumped off of that interstate so that I could get to a phone. I called my daddy. He answered the phone. Who? Because I knew he was asleep. I said, Daddy, I don't know quite what's going on. I was on my way home, and I don't even know where I'm at. I I don't know what to do. And to hear his voice, I just busted out crying. I tell people all the time, "Don't, don't mind me when I'm not up running. Some of my greatest worship is when I'm bawling like a baby. I said, sometimes all I can do is just bawl. With gratitude to a God that remembers me. When I heard my daddy's voice, I began to weep. And I told him, I said, Daddy, don't even know where I'm at. He said, baby, calm down. Just look around you. Kind of give me an idea what's around you. I began to tell him the things I've seen. He said, I know where you're at. Get somewhere in the light. I'll be there as soon as I can. I want to tell somebody coldest day I remember in January in Florida my daddy didn't take no reservation of getting out and getting to me I want to tell you don't you let hell make you believe God don't know where you're at that God don't know what you're fighting it may still be cold and it may st- you may still stand in there waiting and it may seem like a while before it comes but I want to tell you daddy's coming <laughs> oh hallelujah and there is something about a father that when your strength is gone he is able to reflect to you the strength of a father well this morning the Lord spoke this little thought to me and I, I know it's not one of those thoughts you know whoever be there here tomorrow maybe they'll be a lot more intellectual but y'all know I ain't I'm just as real as they come and that's the only way I come from the country up there in North Florida and the only way I can tell you is that God spoke to me this morning and he said Wendy that resistance that the church is pushing against is doing something inside of them That's making perfect them perfect in weakness. Now let me tell you how he's doing that. Hold on and don't get mad with me. I don't like coming down here for only one reason. Y'all make me pay tolls. And that upsets me. Because I always miss them. And I always get a ticket. I do. Ain't five dollars, but I'm thinking, I didn't see no toll booth. I get mad every time I'm slipping at that. Where is the toll booth? It was so clear when I was young coming down here. You had to stop the traffic. You went through and paid, and everybody had paid. Now they got it way over somewhere. And most of the time, I'm three sheets in the wind, and I don't see it apparently. What happens, the more that I come down here, the more that I'm noticing where I messed up. And the more that I do it, I'm seeing it through a different lens. Why? Because in resistance, so to speak, and not liking what I'm going through, I'm looking more, come on, looking more to where it's supposed to be paid. That's how the lens of heaven does us in the storms of life. Sometimes when we are flat of our back or fighting hell, sometimes we would run 
the toll booths that we don't see, but sometimes on our back crying out to God through a different lens, God will show us compassion that we didn't have before. He'll show us things that we didn't have before. Can I tell you it's hard to say it, but in the trial, if you'll turn loose and say, God, whatever you're doing in me, let me know, God, because I'm ready. Come on. I'm ready to get through this. I'm in Tennessee the other day in a ladies' conference. And now that I'm getting older, I can't see further ahead. I can see y'all's pretty selves. But you go a little bit further, I can't see. It just, you know, that camera, that man back there, he's just ahead to me. And I'm looking at these beautiful mountains and forgot my glasses. And I'm thinking, I got to get a picture, but I don't got my glasses. I want a picture, but I don't got my glasses. And crazy as it is, something said, Wendy, the lens of your camera. Thank you, first lady. I'm upset because every time on my way to church, I forgot my glasses. And I wanted to get that picture. And the last day going into that church, something spoke to me and said, the lens on your camera don't need glasses can I tell you there's things in some of your lives that you don't see how God's going to do it and your view is just like mine is in the physical now you can only see right here you're thinking God I don't know how you're going to do this but I feel led of the Holy Ghost to tell somebody God's eyes are not dim he don't need glasses he already knows how he's going to fix every battle you're in. He already knows how he's going to do everything he needs to do to keep you going. Can I tell you today all he needs for us to do? And this is what the Holy Ghost spoke to me and I'm fixing to be done. He said that endurance, that durability comes from the resistance through my weakness. There is a resistance that begins in me and in my spirit that I begin to endure and that enduring power and that durability is that kind that Jesus said that he that endureth until the end the same shall be saved that endurance is what it's going to take to get out of here that resistance to let hell know I don't know like those three Hebrew boys. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to save me from the fire. I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know one thing. I know him and I ain't bowing to you. <laughs> I said I know him and I ain't bowing to you. What was those three Hebrew boys doing? They were resisting in the only way they knew how to let hell know in my weakness I'm going to push back on hell and let hell know God didn't say he's just going to keep me in the sunshine. God didn't say he's just going to keep me in the good times. He told me he'd go with me all the way. Even to the end. And in close, and I just want to leave this with you as the Lord gave to me this morning. He said, Wendy, when I told you that reminder that my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. His strength and his lens are going to be, start, begin to get in clear. You see, there's things I couldn't see when this side went paralyzed. There's things I couldn't see when I'm fighting hell and I couldn't explain to anybody what I was going through. I didn't know that I'd picked up a bacteria and it was in my stomach, the lining of my stomach. All I knew was is it felt like my world had tipped over. And God had just left me hanging. And I want to tell you, and I'm going to say this boldly. If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it. The pain, Sister Wendy, yeah. Because I found 
a strength that in all my life I didn't know I had. I found a relationship with God that I thought I had a good relationship. Oh, I found a closeness that when the world didn't know where I was and my worth to the world was, she's always hurt. She's always in pain now. She can't go shopping with the ladies. She can't get up and clean the church. And all those things went out the door. I found a lens begin to clear up in my view of what a father is. Of what grace is all about. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you today, this is what God told me to bring to First Lady and Pastor in this church. He said that the durability and the resistance Grace in the battle is made perfect in weakness. He said the same way that a man is made after God's likeness. God created man in his own image. He breathed his breath in him. So in a lot of ways, men reflect the nature of God, especially if they're men of God. So the only way that God could bring it to Sister Wendy to bring to you today is a simple way. He said, Wendy, every now and then, the same way you put your worth in what you can do, every now and then, I let all of men fail you so that you know that all the strength and all the help come from your Father. He said, I'm a jealous God. He said, every now and then I like when a doctor don't have the answer. I like it when nobody else can fix it. He said, because then on that dark, cold night, you'll call your Father. And you'll say, Daddy, I don't know where I'm at and I don't know why. But I need you to come. I need you to fix it. And he said, heaven brings a strength in that weakness that hell hates the worst. Why? Because you lean back and know that God, God alone. We sung a song years ago, God likes to work when nothing else will. I stand here today, the Gray Street Church of God, to my precious friends, brother and sister Myers, the children, and their other children. And I tell you that I wish that I could tell you that tomorrow this battle was going to be over. I wish I could tell you that brother Myers was going to get up in the morning completely healed, and I know he can. And I'm looking for it. But you know what I found out? I found out he don't do it the way I want him to. But when he does, he's going to get the glory. He's going to breathe on every one of us. And through that weakness, his strength, his grace. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Every head bowed, no one looking around a moment. I know it wasn't much this morning. Just a simple message, but I'm a simple person. That God every now and then will come and say, it's not about you. Sometimes I have to pull all of your abilities aside. Because every now and then God wants to know, is it about my ability or is it about yours? I believe in this battle, your first lady, your pastor is facing those things. And I believe with all my heart, God is going to do the same thing he's always done. He's going to say, I got you here because I'm going to prove 
But it never was about your ability. It never was about what you could get done. Never was about your wealth. It was about a God that knew exactly where you was. Father, thank you for these people already in the altars, but I pray for all under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for what you've already done in my life. I thank you for what you've done in the lives of these people. But I'm a firm believer, God, that the resistance we're facing now, that the mountains in front of us, that that strength is going to come, Lord, when we push and let hell know the same God of the good times is going to be God of the bad times. God, I praise you for the kind of grace that, that doesn't always come with an abundance, but it always is just enough, sufficient. I thank you for that kind of grace. Asking you today, God, to touch every heart, every mind on the sound of my voice. Those, God, that maybe they don't know how to say what they're fighting. They're battling feelings they never dreamed they'd battle. God, let them know you understand. You didn't come to judge them. You didn't come to push them under when they're fighting for their life. You came to show them a different lens. To turn the lens of heaven and to show them a path they didn't want to take, but a path that's going to make them stronger. A path that's going to make them more compassionate. A path that's going to bring more power. Because like Paul said, in my weakness... He's made strong. We praise you for that today, God. I ask you to somehow in this day touch First Lady in body and soul and spirit. Lift her up, Lord. Would you be her husband right now? Would you undergird her? Would you hold her? Let her know, God, that you knew her in her mother's womb. That there's nothing she's fighting. That the lens of heaven don't know the way out. Touch every heart and every mind. I'm believing it now. We'll be so careful to give you all the praise. God, I love these people, but I couldn't ever love them like you do. Strengthen them right now with the strength that only you can bring. In Jesus' name, sing me something, baby. As they pray in the altar, sing me something. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Standing Come on. That mountain seems too hard to climb. And the valley you just came through has made you wonder why. Hallelujah. Before you lose faith, just think about God's grace. You'll find He's more sufficient. Believe in He'll make a way. God is greater than your need, so much bigger than your problem. No matter how bad it seems, I know he can solve them. If you'll just trust him and believe, he can do anything for he. Answered questions you've stolen. 